Hey guys, what's up? How are you doing? This is Manas and I'm back with a new tutorial on prediction of solids. And this time around that object that we picked up is a hexagonal pyramid. And the question goes like this. A hexagonal pyramid base 25 mm side and axis 50 mm long as an edge of the base on the ground. Its axis is inclined at 30 degrees to the ground. Ground refers to a horizontal plane and parallel to the VP. Draw its projections. So, alright, so let's write down all those things that have been given in the question. The object in this case is a hexagonal pyramid, okay. The dimensions are in the form of base 25 mm side, alright. So, in its base, it's going to have um, six sides equivalent to 25 millimeters and the axis length has been given as 50 millimeters. So, let me show you all these six sides are going to be 25 millimeters each and this hexagon is going to have a center over here and from this center until we reach this apex, the height has been given to us as 50 millimeters. Now guys, there is this condition that has been given to us that has an edge of the base on the ground. Alright, so in your drawing, you have to make sure that one edge of the base always remains in absolute contact with the horizontal plane. Alright, so this condition should reflect perfectly in your drawing. And the next thing is this inclination that the axis makes with the ground or the horizontal plane. So theta axis has been given to us as 30 degrees. Alright, whole lot of data have been given to us. So stay tuned guys because in the next section I'm going to show you how this hexagonal pyramid has been really kept. Alright guys, now that we have read the question, this is the object under consideration. This is what you call a hexagonal pyramid and having six base edges, alright, and with an apex at the top. Now all of them are 25 millimeters each and this axis length, this one over here, has been given to us as 50 millimeters. Alright, now there are certain conditions that are to be followed. The number one condition is that the axis is making an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal plane. So it's going to be something like this. Axis is starting from this point towards the center of this hexagon, somewhere here. And this axis over here makes a certain angle with the horizontal plane, something like this. Alright, now guys try to remember this panda. If the axis say makes an angle theta, then this base over here makes an angle 90 minus theta. Alright, now whenever the axis is in line to HP or VP, there is some assumption that we need to undertake. As far as this question is concerned, the axis is inclined to the horizontal plane. So your initial assumption is going to be this. You have to assume that the solid is resting with its base on HP. Okay. Now, then you have to ask the question to yourself. As to from which way you can see the true shape of the base. All right. And the answer is that the true shape of this base can only be seen from the top. And hence, you have to start by making the top view first. All right. But what sort of a top view are you going to make? Whether it's going to be this kind of a top view or it's going to be this kind of a top view with this edge perpendicular all right now these this is basically the conclusion that students usually go through uh, before solving problem based on projection of solids all right and in order to completely eliminate this confusion i'm going to give you a fun part. please watch this carefully now suppose i'm holding this hexagonal pyramid like this all right and when i try to incline the axis what will happen this corner will remain grounded. Please watch this carefully. Hold it like this. This corner will remain grounded. All right. In the question, it has been clearly asked to us that we need to keep an edge of the base grounded. Corner is not supposed to be grounded. Rather, an edge of the base is supposed to be grounded. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold this pyramid this way. All right, this way. And when I try to do this, incline the axis, what will happen? This edge over here. This edge over here. You can clearly see this edge. All right, this edge will still remain grounded, alright? And hence we have to begin this way. This is going to be our top view. This is going to be our front view. And in step number two, we need to do this, okay? What we're going to do in step number two is we incline this space at an angle of 60 degrees and eventually this axis will become inclined at 30 degrees angle. And then we're going to take its top view, alright? All these so-called slant edges are going to be visible. So this was all about the orientation and positioning of the hexagonal pyramid with respect to horizontal as well as vertical plane. So guys, let's head over uh, to drawing sheet. I'll head over to AutoCAD and explain you how all these things can be implemented. Let's get started. Alright guys, now that you've seen the orientation, the positioning of the object, so let us now begin by creating the top view initially and then we're going to create its corresponding front view. Alright, so what we need to do initially is we need to draw an XY line, alright, uh, below which we're going to create the top view, above which we'll have the front view. You already know that in first angle projection, the horizontal plane is below the XY line and the vertical plane is above the XY line. So you have seen the orientation. So let's start. So I've drawn this uh, line over here and this line you can clearly see this. It is absolutely perpendicular to this XY line. 
okay and this actually is the edge which is going to be grounded all right now this edge is having a length of 25 millimeters so and a hexagon is having internal angles of 120 degrees so what we need to do you need to keep your protractor over here and with this line as base you need to take an angle of 120 degrees in the anti-clockwise sense and 120 degrees in the clockwise sense and you're going to get this all right then again you need to keep your protractors over here all right again 120 degrees same stuff same stuff and then close it down now this guy is over here is the true shape of the base of the hexagonal pyramid which actually is a hexagon itself okay so we're gonna have the apex also and for that follow this okay so this is what you need to do so this actually is the top view of the hexagonal pyramid with this point as the apex all right so let's name each and every point so we have this a b c d e f whereas the apex has been named by o now that the top view is done we're gonna make projector line starting from a starting from F and E until they intersect somewhere along this X, Y line. All right. And this point corresponds to B dash, A dash, B dash, this is C dash, F dash, this is D dash, E dash. Let's have them. Okay. Now in the front view, you will see the height of the hexagonal pyramid, which in this case is 50 millimeters, something like this. And from this point, you need to go upstairs. All right. By an amount of 50 millimeters. That's exactly what is supposed to be done. Okay. And you're going to see these three slant edges from BO, CO and DO. You need to join them. Something like this. Okay. D dash O dash, C dash O dash and B dash O dash. Whereas the slant edges AO, FO and EO will not be seen and they're going to be overlapped by these so-called solid lines. Okay. Now this is the first step. And in the next step, we need to incline the axis. Now guys, you need to visualize this. I think about this. Try to imagine this hexagonal pyramid. And you'll surely realize that behind this solid line, there is an axis. Now, if you keep this solid line at an angle of 30 degrees, say with X, Y line or with the horizontal plane, then eventually the axis will also get inclined at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay. Let's say that the point is A dash and B dash. Okay. And through this point, what we're going to do is we'll make 90 minus theta. So theta has been given to us as 30 degrees. So 90 minus theta is going to be 60 degrees. Now guys, remember this funda. If the axis say is inclined at an angle of theta, then its base is going to be inclined at an angle 90 minus theta. So axis inclined at 30 degrees, then obviously 90 minus 30 will give you 60 degrees. So you need to make sure that the base makes 60 degrees angle. Okay. Something like this. All right. Let's take it away then. Okay. Now you need to keep one leg of a compass here, other leg over here. Then with this as center, you need to put an arc. Okay, something like this and same thing has to be worked out with this D dash E dash also. So let's have both of them. All right, fine. Now, as far as point O dash is concerned, what we need to do is keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here. Then with this guy as center, you need to put an arc. Then same stuff has to be repeated with one leg over here, other leg over here. With this guy as center, you need to put one more arc. All right need to have something like this and this is going to be your intersection point guys and this is what you call O dash. Fine. Let's join O dash with this guy and this guy. All right. So that's our front view. What we've done basically is we have recreated the front view from step number one into step number two, making sure that the axis makes 30 degree angle with this X, Y line. You see this? All right. This eventually turns out as works out as rather 30 degrees because we've kept the base at 60 degrees. And this obviously is going to work out as 30 degrees. That's what I said to you. Okay. A little bit of cheating is always possible and should be done. <laughs> okay. So in the next step, we'll be looking at this object from the top and we're going to draw these so-called projector lines from the top view over here and projector lines from this front view down below and which looks something like this. Please watch this carefully. All right. So this horizontal is for O and this vertical is for O. So this is going to be point O in the top view. Okay. Similarly, you can have all these points. This is going to be this line corresponds to B and D. Okay. And B is going to lie here. All right. And D is going to lie here. Similarly, you can work out all the remaining points. Okay. But what I'm really interested in is these points. So these are the points. Okay. I'm looking for now guys, uh, please watch this. All right. And it should work out something like this. A, B, C, D, E, F. All right. Now you need to figure out by yourself and through imagination as to which slant edges are going to be visible from the top. Now, one thing is for sure this slant edge O dash D dash and O dash E dash are going to be visible. All right. And apart from that slant edges O dash C dash 
O dash F dash will also be visible. So we can draw them with the help of solid lines and it should look something like this. Okay. Now these are the three triangles, triangular faces rather. And behind these triangular faces, there are some edges and some slant edges, some base edges and some slant edges. All right. And they have to be given some respect, although they cannot be seen, right? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw them with the help of hidden lines, broken lines, something like this. Okay. So this over here is the overall top view. And the conclusion is that one edge, you can see this one edge, this name of this edge is a dash B dash or AB simply is grounded. And at the same time, the axis is making an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal plane. All right. And this is the corresponding or the final top view. So guys, that was all from my side. And if you have any doubts, queries do write them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them in the best possible way and as quickly as possible. And if you guys believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge, then do recommend this channel to your friends and classmates so that all of us can benefit. So guys, this is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep drawing.